Hey everyone, Richard here, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to how to run the numbers on a buy to let property when you're using a strategy called buy, refurbish, refinance, repeat. Now, this is a strategy that I have used to successfully grow a multi million pound property portfolio. It's the exact strategy that I've been using for over 10 years now, and it's the exact same strategy that's helped my clients to grow their property portfolios too. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Richard Norris. I've successfully built a multi-million pound property portfolio and my group of property companies does over 100K a month. Now, this video is perfect for anybody who's starting out in property. So if you're brand new to property and you're looking at you know, starting a property portfolio, then this video is going to be perfect for you because it's going to show you how to calculate the numbers um, with the BRR strategy which stands for buy, refurbish, refinance, repeat, right? Now, this is also perfect if you're an existing property investor and maybe you haven't been running it as a, as a business and maybe you've just been buying property over the years and you've been buying it in the traditional way. And what I mean by the traditional way is that you've really just been buying a property um, by putting down a 25% deposit, taking out a mortgage at 75% loan to value on a buy to let product and not adding any value to the property. So you haven't enhanced it over the years, you've not done any refurbishment and therefore maybe even you haven't refinanced the properties to leverage and scale the portfolio. Now that's the big thing I'm gonna be speaking about in this video today as well because the number one thing that enables people like myself to grow a multi-million pound property portfolio is to use leverage. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use leverage safely and that's the most important thing we're going to use like i'm going to show you how i use a, a four-staged process and how i really use financial modeling and sensitivity analysis and what i call stress testing to really make sure that my i'm growing my property portfolio not only am i able to grow it exponentially and grow it quite fast but i'm also able to do it in the most safe and secure way too so let's jump in then and we're going to do like a working calculation here so i've set this up so that I can go through each stage with you, stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. So we're gonna go through this and do a working example together. So if you're following this video, then specifically what I would do is I might pause the video at this point and, and go and grab a calculator, and we're gonna run through this together. And I'm gonna talk about the principles uh, and, and really the basic principles that I have used to help me grow a multi-million pound property portfolio and equally how you can too. So my aim is that at the end of this video and, and having you having watched this video, that you'll be completely au fait and completely comfortable with running the numbers um, to use the buy refurbishment refinance strategy. So now how does this work then? Now for the purpose of this uh, specific example and working example that I wanna take you through today is I'm gonna use a, a property that my client has recently just brought. So I'm gonna share with you a property that my client's recently just brought from in my program, my flagship training program, Property Investor Accelerator. And I'm gonna share exactly what they did and how we done it. Now, this was the first property that they brought and it was a two bed terrace property, okay? And the property was over in a place called Merthyr Tidville over in South Wales. So the first thing is like, we, in order to work out the numbers, what we need to know is we need to know the guide price, how much the property was on the market for. So the property was on the market for 85,000 pounds, right? Now, as property investors, what I like to do is I like to try and get a discount, especially when I'm implementing the buy, refurbish, refinance strategy, I like to get a discount on the, ba on the day that I buy. And in order to do that, we're looking to purchase what we call BMV, below market value properties. Now, there's a lot of people that will tell you that in order to make this strategy work, you must buy below market value. But for me, like that doesn't necessarily have to be the case all of the time. Okay, 90% of the time, buying below market value is a really good thing. And it will definitely help us to increase the return on our investment. Um, and the money that we take out of the deal and the money that we leave in the deal, which you're gonna understand those variables in a second when I take you through this calculation, that really mean that can we grow it faster or slower? The ROI really determines how quickly we can scale the property portfolio, right? And how hard our money's working for us. And naturally we all wanna make our money work as hard as we can. Um, but we don't necessarily need to purchase the property below market value. It's better if we do, but it's not like you have to. 
depending on the your personal circumstances and depending on where you're at. Now, if you're new to property and this is the first time that you've seen this and you haven't bought a property yet and the first property that you're gonna do is a buy, refurbish, refinance model in order to scale and leverage your cash because you have a certain amount of cash that you wanna use. Maybe you've got 30K saved up or maybe you've got anywhere between 30 and 100K saved up and you're looking to start the portfolio and, and leverage that cash, then it's really important for you um, to actually get higher returns on your investment. Therefore, buying it below market value is a fundamental key to making this strategy work. And there are a number of ways that you can buy a property below market value, but in this specific video, I'm not gonna talk about that. If you go into my channel, there's lots of separate videos on how to buy properties below market value, and you can go and check those out after watching this video. But in this specific video, I'm just gonna talk about the numbers and how to do the calculations. So we it was on the market for 85,000 pounds and we purchased this property below market value. We managed to get a discount and we purchased the property for 76,000 pound, okay? I, should, I, I keep saying the term we, I should say my client. My client purchased the property for 76,000 pounds. So they effectively got a 9K discount on, on the day that they purchased it. Now, um, I just want to explain to you what we did on this property as well. So it was a two bedroom terrace property, it was an end terrace, and the property had a really large second bedroom. And all we all they did was put down a petition in the middle of the of bedroom two and create basically another bedroom. So we, we converted it from a two bed to a three bed, but we did it in the most cost effective way possible. And the property wasn't in that bad condition. It needed a little bit of lo love and attention, hence why we got a 9K discount. And all we did was we, we added in a new kitchen, a new bathroom, put in new um, flooring and painted the walls and did a bit of light decoration. So on a sp property like this, 85,000 guide price, purchased it for 76. What's the first thing that we need to calculate? Well, typically when you're taking out, um, when you're doing a buy to let um, property, when you're buying a buy to let property, you typically would take out a 75% mortgage. And what that basically means is that you'd borrow money from the bank on a loan, on a mortgage, and you take out 75% against what you're buying the property for. So the value of the property. So in this example, um, the property is 76,000 pounds. And if we're taking out a 75% uh, loan to value mortgage, we have to put down a deposit, which means that the deposit contribution when we're buying by uh, when we're buying um, buy to let properties, sorry, is usually typically 25%. So if we take the 76,000 and we times that by 25%, that will tell us what the amount of deposit that we need to put down on this property is. So 19,000 pounds is what it works out to be. Then we take out the mortgage. So we, in order to work out the mortgage, we do 76,000 pounds we times that by 75%, and then that gives us our mortgage. So the mortgage in this example is 57,000 pounds, right? Now, the next thing that we have to account for when we're buying a property is we have to account for the stamp duty. Now, as a property investor, we have to pay additional stamp duty, and the additional stamp duty surcharge, surcharge sorry, as of the day of shooting this video is currently 3% in the UK. Now, there are other tax brackets for stamp duty, and you have certain tax brackets broken down into, say, 0 to 125,000 pounds, 125,000 to 250, 250 to, I think, it's about 900, and then there's uh, brackets above that as well. But if we're buying buy-to-let properties and we're building a buy-to-let property portfolio, we're typically going to be buying those properties anywhere between, I'd say, 50, 60,000, all the way up roughly to around 300, 350, would probably be the max for a two- or three-bed property. Um, where we're doing a single let family investment depending on where you're investing in the country. This model specifically works better on um, low house price, high rent ratio areas. So what do I mean by that? Where you're buying a property for say £60,000, £80,000, £100,000 but the rental income still very high which me basically means and this might be a new term for you, but it basically means that the gross yield in that area is very strong. And we typically look for a yield above six and a half to seven percent. Now, if you're watching this video for the first time and, you, and, and again, you haven't done any property training before and you're new to property, then what we mean by yield and the way that we calculate the yield is we take the annual gross rent and we divide it by the, the value of the property. And then we times it by 100 to turn that into a percentage, okay? And that's how you work out the yield.
Now, uh, so, so going back to stamp duty. So in terms of the stamp duty, then on this specific property, there was no stamp duty to pay on the first zero to 125,000 pounds because that tax bracket is zero at the moment. But we did have the additional stamp duty to pay, which was 3%. So what we do is we take 76,000 pounds and then we times that by 3% which basically means that the stamp duty on this property was 2,280 pounds, right? Now, what we, are, what we also have to account for in our um, calculations when we're doing this is we have to account for our purchase costs. Now, our purchase costs um, basically are our legals on the day of buying um, and also our broker fees, our mortgage broker fees, or if we have to pay for valuation. Now, in this specific example, the legal fees were £1,500 and there were no broker fees. The mortgage broker that my client used did not charge a broker fee. Um, so there was no broker fee and there was a free valuation offered by the lender. Now, just to reiterate, and so you understand how to do this if you're buying properties in the future and you do have a mortgage broker's fee, you, that might range from anywhere between 300 to 500 pounds. You just add that cost into the, under the legals, okay? And that would become part of your purchase costs. And again, if you had to pay for the valuation that can range anywhere from sort of 350 to sort of 750, you just add that cost in a well, as well. But in this specific um, example, and in this working calculation, there were no mortgage broker fees and there was no valuation to pay. Now, what we typically do as property investors, if we're looking to scale and leverage, the number one thing is we have to buy it below market value. The second thing that we have to do in order to make this strategy work is we must be able to enhance the value of the property um, upon purchase. So once we purchase it immediately, our intentions are going to be to go in and maybe add an extension or refurbish the property in some way, enhance that value of the property. Now, in this specific deal that my client did, the refurb was only £12,000. So you put £12,000 in here. Now, the next thing that we have to account for is our hold costs. And our hold costs basically mean, well, when we own that property, we have our interest-only mortgage payments going out each month. And we have our uh, utility bills, our gas, water, electric, basically the standing charges whilst it's empty, whilst the refurbishment's going on. And we'll also have cancelled tax payments going out too. Now, in some areas of the country, if you speak to the local ta council tax office, they will uh, make an exemption if you've got a property that's un unhabitable and you're doing a refurbishment. You may be able to get cancel tax relief and in this specific example we did so there's going to be zero cost in for cancel tax over here okay but we're going to calculate our hold cost so we have to calculate what is the interest only mortgage payments that we're paying now typically when we buy properties doing a buy a buy refurbishment strategy or building a buy to let property portfolio we typically use interest only mortgages over repayment mortgages and again i'm not going to explain that and go into the granular detail as to why into this video because again if you go into the into my channel and you go into the playlist there's um you'll be able to find a video called interest only v repayment mortgages and i explain why we use interest only mortgages and do some calculations in there for you to understand that part if you're not sure why we use interest only mortgages and why i've used interest only mortgages to scale my property portfolio but in this example then we, we look at calculating the interest only mortgage payments now the mortgage that we took out on this specific property up here was 57,000 so we take 57,000 and we times that by the interest that the that the mortgage company is charging us on the loan now in this specific property it was brought in a in, in a limited company and as of today uh, at the time of this recording uh, interest rates are around three to three and a half percent in limited companies. So 57,000 times three and a half percent, and then we divide that by 12 to give us our monthly mortgage payments, means that the monthly mortgage payments, sorry, I shouldn't have rubbed that out, the monthly mortgage payments that we're paying are 166 pounds a month, okay? 166.25, I'm just gonna put 166 here and round it up to the nearest pound. Okay, cancel tax is zero and then utilities. We typically allow sort of 15 pound for gas, water and electric for each one of those as standing charges. So 15 for gas, 15 for water, 15 for electric equals 45 pounds a month there. So then what we do is we say, well, our total hold costs, monthly hold costs, that we, that we have cash going out of our bank whilst the refurbishment is going on and it's empty is 166 
plus the council tax, which is zero in this example, plus £45 for the utility bills, gives us a total of £211 a month, okay, per month of hold costs. Now, on a £12,000 refurbishment, that should typically take less than four weeks to do, and we would really line our tenants up to come in straight after the refurb. So we might only allow one month refurb in this one month of hold costs, sorry, whilst the refurb's going on before our tenants come in and we start collecting uh, rental income and revenue and thus start to make a profit. But in this example, when I do examples, when I, sorry, not when I do examples, when I calculate my own buy to let property investments using a buy refurbish refinance strategy, I always allow for three months when I'm doing this model because I always over, I'm always really conservative. I always like to look at the worst case when I'm doing my numbers. So I'll take the 211 and I'll times that by three, which gives us a hold cost of 633 pounds, okay? So then what we basically need to do is look at, okay, well, that's all of the costs on the way in, okay? So stage one is like my purchase costs. Now, we need to calculate the total investment that's required from us as, in, as property investors to put down on this specific deal. And the way we do that is we take the deposit of £19,000, because that's our cash that we put into the deal. We add on the, the stamp duty of £2,280. We then add on the legals of £1,500. And we then add on the refurbishment costs of £12,000. And then we add on £633 for our month for our hold costs. So a total investment, the money in, we call this money in, the total investment in this deal required from us to do this deal is, um, I'll put it down here, 35,413 pounds. Now, this is particularly good, this is a particularly good investment if it's your first investment. It's kind of like, it's a low entry model if you're using cash to build the portfolio and you're using your cash funds. And maybe you've got anywhere between 30 and 100K and you're looking at what to do with your first first investment. Then 35,000 pounds is a reasonable investment uh, and a pretty conservative and safe number to go in at to do your first deal. Okay, so 35,413 pounds is the total investment required. That's stage one complete. We now then go on to stage two. And what we do is we, we basically look to refinance the property. So as property investors, we basically look to go in and refinance the property as quickly as we can. Now, typically, um, when you're using mortgages that um, the FCA regulated, they typically say that you cannot refinance or remortgage your property until you've owned the property for six months. However, there are certain lenders, specialist lenders that myself and my clients use. And I like to use a company called Kent Reliance, KRBS, Kent Reliance Building Society. And if you qualify to get lending from them based on your personal individual circumstances, then you can basically um, buy the property, add value to the property, and then you can, you can basically refinance the property without paying an early repayment charge and you can do it before six months, okay? So I like to use them because it means that I can get my cash back out of the deal that you're going to see in a second as quickly as I can or as much of the cash that I can take back out of the deal to move on and buy my next property. The longer I have to wait before I can refinance, the slower, the, basically the longer it's going to take me to build my property portfolio. It's going to slow me down. So this is why I like to use lenders like Kent Reliance. And typically when you refinance a property, you, definitely, you, you, you're, you usually have to pay an early repayment charge. And in the first year, it's usually around 5%. And then it kind of reduces year on year. On a two-year product, at the end of two years, you can refinance without the early repayment charge. But again, if I'm using lenders like Kent Reliance, there's no early repayment charge because what they do, and not to confuse you and not to go into too much detail here, but I'm, I'm one of those people who's very detail-oriented and wants to give you all the value up front. Um, then but basically they use something what's called a further advance facility and therefore they basically top your mortgage up, you take the money out and there's no early repayment charge. So let me explain to you how this works. So we brought the property up here for £76,000 but really it was worth around eighty five. so we got, we got it below market value. The second thing that we did is we added value to this. So we spent 12000 doing it up and then we basically go to the lender and say, look, we brought this two-bed property. We've now turned it into a three-bedroom property. 
and therefore we'd like you to come out and value it. It's all it's looking really nice now. We've done a sexy refurb and we want you to come and refinance it and, and, and basically take out a new loan against the property. So they come out, the surveyor comes out, they value it. Now this specific property got valued at 115000 pounds and my clients are really pleased with that and so was I for them. So that was £115,000 based on the market value of a three bedroom property in the area. So then what we do is we take out a new mortgage, we take £115,000, we times that by 75%, which gives us a new mortgage of 86250 okay? Now, what we then do is we take this 86250 and we pay back this original mortgage that we took out on day one. And the reason we do that is because we want to release the equity from the property, and this is called a refinance. So we take the 86,250 and we pay back the 57,000 pounds, okay? So that means that the money out of this deal, the money, the cash that comes back out into our bank account is 29,250 pounds. And we can then use that £29,250 to go on and buy a second property and use that as a deposit and then repeat the process. And this is that this is how the buy, refurbish, refinance, repeat model works and is the exact model that I have used to scale my property portfolio and continue to use today to scale. Now, then what we have to work out is, okay, well, how much money do we leave in the property? And, and the way we calculate that is we look at the initial cash that we put on, on in on day one, which was 35000 413 pounds and then we minus off the money that we take out which was 29,250 so we leave in this deal just 6,163 pounds of our cash okay and that's the refinance process then what we do is we move on to stage three and we basically start to look at okay well what we need to look at is our rent appraisal and I always do the numbers on exit so we brought the property we added some value to it, we refinanced it, and we rented it out. Now, when we rent it out, I always look at the exit numbers on the new mortgage. So I always take the new mortgage here of 86,250 and run the numbers on that because that's what that's what the property's worth now, and that's the, the new mortgage that we've taken out. Now, specifically, as I said earlier on in the video, interest rates are around 3 3.5% for buy-to-let properties if you're buying them in a limited company. Now, this property, the rent on this property for a three-bed in the area was £675 a month, okay? And then we calculate the new mortgage, and we do it at the 3.5%. So when we get the mortgage, it's going to be at 3.5%. So we run it on today's numbers when we've done the refinance. Now, how do we work that out then? How much is the interest-only mortgage payment? So we take the 86250 which is this number here, which is the new mortgage. We times that by 3.5%, which is the interest that we're paying on the loan. And then we divide that by 12 to give us our, our new monthly mortgage payments. And our new monthly mortgage payments to the nearest pound are £251 a month, okay? And then what we do is we start to look at our management cost, okay? Now, if you're somebody who self-manages the property, then you don't have a cost here. Typically, if you're looking to scale a property portfolio, like myself, and grow it as a business, then I use, I delegate, and I actually have good qualified property managers and letting agents looking after my property. So I typically pay 10% against the gross rental income on a buy-to-let property. So we take the £675, we times that by 10%, which gives us a figure of six. £67.50. Now, for the purpose of this call, I'm going to call it 68 to make the maths easy for you to understand. So, £68 of management fee, round up to the nearest pound. And then again, on monthly operating expenses, on a buy to let property, I allow for 10%. Now, there's no, you might notice in the cost, there's no allowance for furnishings. That's because when we rent out a buy to let property, uh, to a single family, typically speaking, we do it on an unfurnished model and we don't have to provide white goods or anything like that. That's why those costs aren't in there. But our monthly operating expenses, what does that mean? It basically allows for your buildings and contents insurance and for any kind of maintenance throughout the year. Um, you get your annual pat testing that we have to do, our boiler service that we have to do, um, safety certificates, all those things that we have to do as a landlord, we allow in our MOE. And we allow 10% of the gross rental income on a, on a single family let home which is a buy to let so we well, that would be another 60 675 times 10 percent would be 67 pound 50 and again for the purpose of this example we're putting 68 and round up to the nearest hole therefore the profit is 675 our rent minus our mortgage at 251 minus our management fees at 68 and then minus our 
monthly operating expenses at 68 as well gives us a gross monthly profit of 288 pounds a month right and then we have to work out our annual profit so the 288 times 12 means that our annual profit is 3456 pounds just going to double check i've done that right 288 times 12 equals 3,456 of annual profit. And then with that annual profit, we can work out our return on investment. Now, as a property investor, our return on investment is our most important variable. This tells me how hard my money is working. The higher the return, the higher my, um, the, sorry, the higher the return, the harder my money is working for me. So we take the, and the way we do that, the calculation, the formulas, you take your annual your annual uh, gross your annual profit annual gross profit you divide it by um the money left in the deal and then you times it by 100 so in annual profit in this example is your 3456 um, pounds we divide that by the money we left in which we worked out here which is 6163 pounds okay and then we times that by 100 to terms it into a percentage sorry, turn it into percentage, which means that our return on investment is 56%, which is really good. It basically means within two years, this property has paid us all our cash back. It doesn't owe us anything and we're there for it break even. And for me, that's really good because the quicker that I get the cash back into my bank, the quicker that the deal doesn't owe me any money back. So the property doesn't owe me anything and I've broke even, then there's no risk really in the deal. because I don't really care if house prices crash at that point, purely because if I'm holding it and I've got rental income coming in, and as long as it's paying me every month, and within two years, my money's back with me, I'm now, lo I'm now no longer at risk of market conditions, um, pushing, my, pushing the value of my money, my cash in that deal down, okay? Uh, now, even in that example, if you left more money in and it took you longer to get your money out and the house price crashed during that process, as long as you've got a good enough rental income and it'll covered up at till five, five, six percent interest rates, which we're going to do in a minute, and it's still cash flows and your primary goal is to hold it, it's very unlikely that you're going to get into any difficulties. Now, as a property investor, you do need to read the small terms on a mortgage. And at the end of your mortgage terms and conditions, it will say, if you drop below, say, 75% loan to value, we have the right to call in the loan. And they could do that, but the chances of them doing that are very slim. Typically speaking, if the, if the rent's coming in every month and the bank are getting their money every month from you, uh, then there would be no reason to call in the loan, right? So that's how we kind of build in that safety and that sensitivity analysis. So now what we do is we go on to stage four, and this is my rent of praise. When I call this my stress test, my sensitivity analysis, I basically run the same numbers, but I want to know what my profit is at if interest rates went to 5%. And the reason I look at 5% is because the banks basically work out a rent coverage. And the rent coverage is basically how much is your rent in comparison to your interest only mortgage payments and they typically look for around 145 to 150 percent for your rent to be bigger than your mortgage interest only payments at five percent interest rates so i'm going to show you that here so our rent on the property again is 675 so you put 675 here our mortgage is 251 ah sorry just was about to make a mistake so 251 is the mortgage at three and a half percent interest but the interest only payments have now gone up to say let's say the mortgage goes up to five percent we basically want to work out what we'd have to pay so we basically the way we do that is we go back up to here and we take the 86,250 our mortgage we times it by five percent and then we divide that by 12 okay and that basically gives us our interest payments um our mortgage interest payments if interest rates would have got up to five percent on our on our uh, current mortgage there so that's 359 pounds a month and the way i did that i took the 86,250, i times it by five percent i divided it by 12 and that gave me 359 pounds as my um monthly mortgage costs management stays the same at 10 so 6750 rounding to nearest pound 68 exactly the same with moe as before so 68 there so if interest rates went to five percent what would my profit be six six seven five minus three five nine minus 68 minus 68 i end up making 
profit of 180 pounds, which is lower than the 288 I was making before at three and a half percent. But I'm still making a profit. And the KPI that I look for, the key performance indicator that I look for here when I'm analyzing deals is I want this number to be bigger than 100 pounds. And if this number is bigger than 100 pounds, then I'm happy. It meets my stress testing. So now the return on investment then at 5%, would you do your 180 pounds, you times that by 12 to give your new annual profit. So I put the new annual profit down here and the new annual profit would be 2,160. We divide that by the money left in. And remember that money left in was 6,163. So we divide that by 6,163. 6163 and then we times it by 100 to get our return. So 2160 divided by 6163 times by 100 would mean that even so yeah even even at 5% stress test this property would still make me a 35% return on my investment. So within 3 just over 3 years this money wouldn't owe me any money back. Effectively, this £6,000 that I've left in the deal comes back within three years. 2160 if you do 2160 and you times that by about 3.3, you can see you end up with 7128 So it's just over three years that you get your money back. You get this 6163 back from the profits. And that means all your money is out because we took the, the previous 29000 out up here when we did the refinance 29250 so the deal only owes me 6163 which is being recouped by my rental profits every year from renting the property out and that is exactly how you calculate your re your return on investment and that is exactly how you calculate the numbers manually and work out your calculations when you're using a buy refurbish refinance repeat model for a buy to let strategy so i hope that was useful for you if you found this vid video valuable please hit the like button um, it will help me get more people watching our videos it will help the youtube algorithm and i'd really appreciate it and i'd be truly grateful if you could hit the like button if you found some value in this if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, smash that subscribe button and I produce content um, multiple times a week. So if you want to be notified of new videos like this, new content that I'm producing, just hit the bell icon and you'll get notified. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.